Hello, uh, this video will be about serving as a module in Gemini Terrain 18. In Gemini Terrain 18, serving has now arrived as a module and in this way you can run your serving cases in this program. And the way we've chosen to implement it is by using a type of app layer, a new type of application layer, a surveying app layer. This new type of app layer can be used in many ways, uh, and in this video I would like to show three different ones. Uh, first one I'm going to talk about is that we can set up a surveying app layer as a coordinate register. Basically, in this app layer you import your known points, in your known coordinates, uh, and these known coordinates can be used throughout the projects in other, uh, for other app layers. Uh, the coordinate register can then also be used in other projects and uh, throughout the company if you want to do that, as long as the coordinate system which AppLayer was set up for is the same. The second thing I'm going to talk about is using the surveying AppLayer in simulation mode. This way you can plan the surveying before you even go out and measure. This will hopefully lead to saving both time and resources because then you can check what that uh, you actually can see between the points before you go out and do the measurements. And you can also check that you have enough points and stations uh, observations uh, to ensure that you are within the requirements of the survey. You can test what quality you can expect from the network before you've made any measurements out in the field is quite nice. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, how you can use the data, well use the app layer in a way of analyzing and adjusting the data set to get the best possible results of the survey. This is when you have already been out and measured and want to make sure that you get the best possible fit. To help me show this to you, we have received data from a field group, some example data from the Sindli Krisse. And I will use this data to show how to use the serving module in the construction area. Okay. So we're now in uh, terrain 18. Uh, I've already imported some data or uh, uh, put in some data here. So we have some terrain data, strata, we have an SFE road model, we have some uh, DVG model, and this way you can uh, get different subject areas uh, together with your surveying uh, set and can see how things fit together. Uh, as I said, the first thing I was going to talk about is cordon resistor. Uh, and it is set up in a surveying app layer. So if I right click here and add, you can see we now have, sorry, not add, create new. And you can see here we have a surveying, uh, GM, a GMI survey data file we can use. Now, the name for when you're going to use a surveying app layer as a coordinate register, the name is very important. The name has to be the same as the coordinate register it uses, else uh, Terrain won't recognize it as a coordinate register. So, what shall the name be? Well, let's look uh, at this project here, which I'm working on now. It has coordinate system out of what is on uh, zone 32, so UTM zone 32 and then 1954 heights. Uh, what we're looking for is the code in front here. So this code here, which is actually the code, the behind and the, the, the semicolons are just the description. So uh, I've already set up one here, and as you can see, it has the code yeah, your 89 space 32 dash and then 1954. And it's important it's written exactly this way. And when you've done that, when I create a new data file, I'll just call it uh, the survey, like that. Great. And you can see the core reg register comes up here as it recognizes the coordinate system set up in the project and the name of the file. Very nice. Uh, the other thing that comes up with the terrain uh, is, well, you have the separate uh, app layer, but we've also created a new uh, toolbox. 
And within this toolbox, you have the possibility of doing different types of analysis, uh, which I'm going to go through a little bit more, and also adjustment and, of course, improvements. And we also have uh, different reports we can look at. Now, the second thing I was going to talk about was uh, uh, basically a simulation of a data set. Now, to set up a data set in simulation, we can click this one here. And that means this app layer here can be used in simulation, adding stations, uh, unknown stations, adding observations, and so forth. Uh, I've already started one app layer in simulation. Uh, and I want to show you how you can add more observations, more stations to this simulation data. So for instance, uh, I'm just going to set this as the active app layer. Uh, here you can see we already started and if you look into an hour set is active and the horizontal list belongs to the active app layer so here we have the as we probably used to point lines polygons and in addition we have this surveying tab and here you'll be able to see for instance points stations observations and so forth of all the different types of data you can get in, and also a tab that tells you of the analysis. Uh, so for instance here, uh, this station here, UM4, uh, if we want to add more observations to that one, we can just click uh, this is station UM4 with these observations, and I can click new, I'll click on this one over here. This is TT7. You can also see it's TT7. And I can set up with a view height of uh, 1.6, like that. And we can check that we actually can see between these two. Oh, it looks OK. Uh, we can also add new stations. And now I'm going to add one in the middle of the road here. Just click here. There is a new station. And we can say that that one has a height of 1.6. Uh, and we'll do a new observations, for instance, up to this one here. We'll do one, this one over here. We'll set that up with a view height of 1.6. This is just simulation, but it just gives an indication of how you can do it. You can set up a point over here, a new one this one here uh, and we can do a new one all the way through here or this one now if you miss this a little bit like this one uh, it says um8 it starts a new station but you can just change it to um5 like that and we'll uh, even add a height for that one too view height like that uh, and we have a new station with observations. Uh, you can see through the tunnel between these ones. Yeah, uh, works just. And this one here, uh, you might want to adjust it a little bit as it's the height or whatever. But we can also just go to the point here uh, and locate. Click on a new location, for instance, a little bit further here. Okay, and you recalculate the observation to on this new station. And now it's a bit better. So this way you can put, uh, as I said, different subject areas together with your simulation and see if you actually have visibility between your points. Now we want to do a few um, analysis of the data uh, to make sure we are within the requirements. Uh, before we start that, it would be really nice to do uh, basically to see if we have uh, well, if not, uh, if we have enough set for the data. So we want to do the uh, we want to do a calculating of the different adjustments here. But if we we can add stations and we can add more and more observations here to have enough sets. But let's say when we do the, just to, 
So just to repeat, uh, the reliability in simulation is uh, first and foremost dependent on, uh, on the geometry of the network and the weight of the observations and external reliability. Uh, then you look into the deformation and check that you are within your requirements. Now we want to check uh, proper simulate, uh, proper data set also. So we have a data set here. We can look at it in 3D also. Uh, we have it in survey. That's where we have it. But, yeah. I've turned off this one, but anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. So we have uh, a data set here with known and unknown data, and it's calculated in sets. So it's uh, it has a lot of things we need to do here. OK, first and foremost, when we import the data, uh, all the points come in with a approximate positioning, uh, just one point by one point. So the first uh, one thing I want to do is run an adjustment just before we do anything else. Like that. So we run an adjustment on this data set here. Uh, it just gives you a bit better uh, positioning before we start uh, doing uh, blunder detection and uh, all that stuff. OK, uh, so we haven't run any analysis yet. So the data set may still be affected, of course, of uh, deficiency of the data sets. But uh, we also know that this is done in several types of sets. Um, so what we're going to have to do is adjust the mean. So we mark them, right click, and adjust the mean. Calculate the mean value. OK. So then we have adjusted the mean down to eight stations. There's a report there for just the mean round observations, and I have already written out. Uh, I'm sorry about the Norwegian. Um, in a case, this one is quite good uh, to see the difference between the the mean and the original one. Uh, and what I've done here is I've highlighted the biggest ones, uh, and from this report I can see that this data set is very very good. The worst ones are very, very small, uh, so it's not really it's not really a bad thing. But it's a nice thing to check in the already here. You can look for problem areas or look for uh, something that went wrong, maybe an observation or, or a station you don't really want to have, an observation you don't want to have for that station. Maybe there's a problem there, so you can check it already yeah, in that report. That's this report here. Uh, but this looks very OK. Um, so what well, the next we want to do is start our analysis. Uh, as I said earlier here, the analysis are based on the standards used in here. So when we do the blunder detection, uh, we have this test level here, um, which is fine to use. If you have less than 50 observations, you might want to change that. Uh, you also have uh, the global test uh, and inner liability, out liability that we already checked out earlier here. Okay, so for the blunder test, mark all the data and do a blunder test. Okay, uh, now here I would sort on factor, and you can see uh, it's quite high up here, and that is because basically you have an observation going out there and you have no control whatsoever. There's no other observation going to this point. So what you can do here is double click and omit this one in horizontal, vertical, and distance. You see horizontal, vertical, and distance are the ones that are a problem. Click OK, and then mark them all and do another blunder detection. OK. Now, here's something we need to think about. OK, so statistical, this is uh, uh, what we would call a blunder, because it has a factor above 1. What you do is you check your student T observations against the student T observations for the whole data set. Uh, and if you have over 1, it's supposed to be a bad area. But this data set is so good that 
tiny, tiny errors for in the data set will see, say that it is a blunder, although it is not, <laughs> not really. It's statistically set compared to the rest of the data it is. But yeah, sometimes you just have to look at the data and actually think a bit before you just move on. So in, just in this case, I'm actually going to leave them in. And next thing I want to check out is global. It's one here, global test. And now that one tests each of the known points just in case the known points has an issue. So I'm going to test the known points by marking every data set, test the known points. And what it does, it frees up the known points and it checks if the data set is better if this one was unknown uh, and needed a calculation. And now again, <laughs> The data set is so good that it basically says all the known points can be unknown and the data set will improve. <laughs> uh, but I am going to um, keep the point, lock the point anyway, uh, and keep the points as known. As you can see, the limits and everything, all the values here are so very small. <laughs> So the data set I got is really good. Uh, so I'm just going to lock it. And this one actually says to keep it. <laughs> uh, so when a data set is very good, if you free up one point, yes, you might improve it slightly. But if I free up all the points, it's definitely not going to be better anyway. So it's tested one to one on one. Uh, it looks good. Next thing I want to do is inner liability like that. And OK, so redundancy, that's what we're looking at. Uh, and as you can see here, we again have this area here where you are between two known points and very low redundancy. So I can do the whole test again and just not use this one. So like that. Uh, I'll do the uh, inner liability test again. Okay, so there are some areas here which have low redundancy, but it is between known points. Now, how many observations do we need to actually make sure that the known points are good? Uh, these are known points. They have been calculated before. We're pretty sure they're okay. So a low redundancy between them is not a big deal. In any case, you can create a report for it uh, with the, the inner liability, and you'll have your backup there later on if someone asks. Uh, and then, of course, we have the outer reliability, like that. Looking at the deformation uh, compared to, now I forgot to see what kind of standard I've used. Yeah, we use this one again. This compared to that standard uh, and checks for the deformation. And it looks all good here. So something to make sure it's OK. Uh, so I guess we can do an adjustment calculation of the whole data set. And we have the data here. Uh, I'll just open up here so you can see. Like that, uh, and the data set looks okay. You can sort them by clicking on age, for instance, and ellipse, ellipse D, standard deviations. Doesn't look too bad. If you're happy with that, you can approve them. And now all your points, coordinates, are known points with, uh, with information about and the deviation and everything. So that is what I wanted to talk about uh, today. Uh, and uh, uh, so if you have any questions, anything, you can just contact us and we'll try to help. Okay, bye for now.